if you would have if you would have given me, hey Pablo, what you think about an end credit scene for this movie? Oh, I bet. Hmm. At the end of this movie, these people are celebrating. They got their planet back. Galactus looms <laughs> over. Cut. <laughs> That's how you do stuff, baby. <laughs> Instead we get instead we get Kamala Khan doing the Nick Fury from Iron Man One about putting a team together. What up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nigerian Report. I'm your host Pablo and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, this is our 6 30 in the morning Friday because we couldn't wait. Spoiler, non-spoiler, who cares review. The Marvels. Brian told me he was gonna go see it. I initially didn't want to go see it, but I had to go see it because of that trailer they put out. That was very smart of them to do that because now it got people curious, like, what is this really? So, golf cap to you, Mr. Faggy. As I watched this movie, <sighs> there were certain things that interested me visually that I enjoyed watching. I think that was about it, man. For me, visually, I liked what I was seeing. The other worlds, you know, I liked that stuff, you know, and, and if you could make it interesting, that's what the hopes of Quantum Mania was going to be. But in this, Brian, the characters just brought it back to the goofiness that I was afraid of, and it just wasn't an enjoyable time for me. Your thoughts? I think it's the worst movie Marvel has made by a decent margin. I think it's one of the worst superhero movies that's ever been put forth in the genre. I think it's a disaster. I think it's a waste. I think that last marketing was a complete trick and deception to make you think this was an, which like we kind of knew, to make you think this was in any way tied to Thanos or tied to anything significant from the times that we actually love the MCU. And, you know, whether this is the idea that Nia DaCosta and Brie Larson really wanted to put out there versus what Kevin Feige and the post-production team tried to cobble together in the editing room doesn't matter. This movie is a complete failure on every level. And the sooner we can erase it, uh, I think the better off we're all going to be for it. I feel sad for some of the performers um, in, in the film because I think they were saddled with sort of an impossible task of trying to trying to save a script that didn't work and trying to pull off some scenes that just never were going to have any emotional depth. Would you put it in the same bucket as like the not supposed to be released Fantastic Four type of movie, like the Captain America movies that were put out in the 80s and Punisher, those type of films? Batman and Robin. That's what it reminds me of. Okay. It, it reminds me of that because... And I actually hope it is that in the sense that Batman and Robin to me wound up being the inflection point in the genre, right? Because after Batman and Robin, you get Blade, you get X-Men, and then all of a sudden you get Dark, you get Batman Begins and like, <clears throat> we're off. Yes. But the reason I, I, it reminded me of Batman and Robin is it's so goofy. It's so silly. Yeah. To me, it looks so dumb at many points along the way but it is from the ethos and this universe that had been very successful in making money, which is right dating back in, in the 80s. It was the Keaton Batman, Batman Returns, those make a lot of money. Then Joel Schumacher takes over and Batman Forever, whatever you think of it, makes a ton of money. So like the Batman franchise is cranking money, cranking money. And so then they go and make Batman and Robin and everyone involved is like, well, this is guaranteed to make a ton of money. And then it doesn't because it's so silly and it's so campy. And it's so over the top and it kind of like forces them to hit pause on everything that's going. Now, they didn't have as much of a universe as Marvel does now. But like when I saw this movie, the way it was chopped up, the way it, to me didn't make a lot of sense, the way the characters seem like in different movies at times um, and the way, yeah, the scenes even when they there was a hint of charm or a hint of sort of and just pure entertainment for entertainment's sake, it was so just silly and disjointed that I'm just like, this has to be the bottom, right? This has to be like the moment when Marvel's putting this together or Disney's looking at this 
and saying like, oh, we, we have to change. Hopefully that is the case, Brian, that this is an, uh, a tipping point towards, okay, we know what not to do. Let's not try to do that again. Right. Uh, but you said something that sort of, I had to write it down. Do you think they believe this was guaranteed money here? Guaranteed success here? I think when they greenlit it, yes. I think coming up on the release, absolutely not. I think to me, and I've texted you this, the fact that Disney didn't, never made an attempt to delay this, even though everyone associated with it was still on strike and not able to promote it. The fact that they did a complete 180 in the promotional material from the playful and the goofy side to the, we need to connect this as closely as possible to the Infinity Saga. All of that to me are signs the studio knew this was in trouble. And basically <clears throat> it got to a point where they said, it's better for us if we just take the loss now versus delaying it trying to remarket it, trying to do anything more with it in the editing room. So at the time they greenlit it, I think they would have told you, hey, first one made a billion one, floor on this next one is probably 700 million. But I think, yeah, as they got, as they saw what they had and they saw the tide had turn and coming up on, you know, release date, they knew this thing was gonna be, gonna be a, you know, a nice write off for them. Yeah. Brian, let's get into the characters. Everybody sounded the same. In their speech pattern, their cadence, mm -hmm. in their goofiness. Samuel Jackson, I, right now, he isn't the guy that came out the first, uh, the, the first teaser we got. That's not the same guy. If you watch that right now, you get hyped. The guy that's gonna deliver those lines now, do you get hyped when he speaks? If you're trying to get teenagers, I get it. I mean, there were teenagers there that I think enjoyed it, Brian. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Really? They were there. They were. They they, they they were talking about it. They seem excited. I don't. I, I didn't hear any negative because I, I I just walked by people just to hear what they had to say. There were some people that enjoyed the entertainment of it. Marvel should change their name to Marvel Entertainment because that's what they're turning into. Musicals and all this stuff and singing and... Dude, I probably would have left if my son wasn't with me. I kind of wanted to see it first and then take him. I'll probably put him in the, hey, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> but... What did you think of the performances? Uh, like I said, I, I felt like they were in different movies. So to me, um, Dar Ben feels like she is in like Captain Marvel 1 or she's in a much more serious film. She's a pretty okay. stoic, one-note character who has a pretty simple motivation, which is from, you know, she's from the attack, uh, Captain Marvel's revenge on Hala, right? Basically is her, her sole motivation. But she's delivering these lines like it's a Greek tragedy. Meanwhile, I mean, Brie Larson is clearly trying to be as silly and as down home and as, I don't know, like for someone who's won an Oscar, I mean, that's, that, it looked like she was struggling the whole time to like, credibly Man. pull off the affect she was either she going struggled. for or being asked to do she tr she struggled to care like i feel like captain marvel one which is a pretty uneven performance she's more cocky like then like when we meet her you know she's she's pretty self-assured and then obviously mm -hmm. doubt gets cast on that when she discovers her past okay that's a pretty classic hero trope she clearly was trying to like be more human and be more relatable and be more like maternal or more sisterly. And just, I don't know, like none of it worked for me. Like I, I just, I think she will be just as glad to be done with the, the, the character as I will gl be glad not to see her try anymore. 
I said this to you like five minutes into my screening. I think you need to have seen Miss Marvel and need to have seen WandaVision to actually to, get to and care, care yeah. about the other two characters at Certainly. all. Certainly. Exactly. I, I mean, like, because like to me, the Kamala Khan was like, all right, well, I, I know what her spiel is because I saw the show and I know what her family dynamic is because I saw the show. So that actually, I think they did too much of it. But initially, it kind of was working for me because I'm like, oh, this is comfortable. I, li I like that. My kid liked the show. Like, it, it felt, I felt like falling into the rhythm of something. Yeah. Maria Rambo, I got to be honest, like, I, I didn't remember her that much from WandaVision. Like, I remember her being in it. Yeah, yeah. But, like, yeah, when yeah. she popped up and, like, it was kind of acting like I was supposed to remember her whole backstory, I kind of was like, I haven't seen you in four years. And, like, I don't. I don't care. Yeah. Like, it wasn't so, that. Yeah. Yeah. It just felt like a continuation of something that wasn't all that memorable to begin with. So, but again, the movie seemed to assume you sort of got it. Um, so I don't know. Like, again, it just felt like they were not on the same wavelength at all times. But I would say, I think Marvel went into it thinking millions of people saw WandaVision. People probably still watching Vajra. And they're looking at the numbers. They can see the numbers of how much people tuned into WandaVision. Perhaps that number turns into dollars for them, right? So they can, you know what I'm saying? So, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people did see WandaVision. I mean, I guess that's right, but I feel like she is, she, Tayona Paris is, you know, she's one of the three heroic leads. Yeah. And they gave her her powers in that one moment in the TV show. And that's, and that's you know, anytime a hero gets their powers, that's a pretty significant thing. You want to see what they're able to do. But in this movie, it was like they gave you like a very brief, tiny little reference or flashback to it, but it almost was like washed un washed away. He's like, oh, she has powers. Like, yeah. You know, and, and so I. Brian, everybody has powers now. You know yeah. Like, I mean, everybody least, can get it. <laughs> like, yeah, just like, like that. Yeah, I mean, at least Kamala Khan has a MacGuffin, right? She has the other bangle, and the whole show was really about the bangle. So, again, you need, if you saw the show, then you kind of got that. But, like, I don't know. It, it just felt like it cheapened a little bit, you know, her her standing, even right to the point where they couldn't give her a name. So, it kind of was like, I don't know. The whole thing was so, like, what? I don't know. But then that, we have heard the that whole discovering that name stuff, yeah, yeah, and that's another inflection point for me. I would have walked out if I couldn't take it anymore. I would have been like, I'm out. But then they give her the gravitas biggest heroic moment at the end, and I'm like, I that's not an arc. So the yeah. arc is the moment in the TV show up until this crossover into the other, you know, part of the multiverse. Like that's what I mean. Like that's supposed to be a highly dramatic culminating moment yeah. and it's empty because they haven't built it properly for you to care about Maria Rambo giving of herself in that moment. They haven't built the multiverse uh, 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 saga properly for us to care. This is a recurring problem for Marvel. This happened in quant and it was quantum mania was really bad. And I thought it was just as bad here, which is, Marvel has, when you talk about Marvel Entertainment, I think a lot of what's starting to happen in these movies is they are skipping all of the journey to try to give you the pop moment. Yeah. But not realizing that, like, the only reason we care about that moment is that we have that experience, right? It's like, it'd be like, we did a single Avengers movie. We did the entire Infinity Saga in 2012, and Robert Downey Jr. snaps the gauntlet. Yeah, that would have looked cool. But the emotional stakes of that would not have been nearly the same as building it, taking your time over the 12 years mm -hmm. to where when he says, I am Iron Man, and you're like, oh, we're bringing it full circle for this egotistical, right? The guy who Steve Rogers said, you never lay down, right? And let a guy crawl over you. Mm -hmm. And then he does that for the entire universe we care yeah but when you do it this way and like quantum mania was the same thing where it's like oh casting lang has powers oh we're gonna we're gonna go through this whole journey to form this task for kang that 
only Ant-Man can do. Oh, no, wait, we're just going to punch a hole in the, in the quantum realm. He's going to reach in, pull off a heist and be done in five minutes. Like it, it just and that's this movie. All of it was like scenes where I'm just like, I'm so I know I'm supposed to care, but you haven't given me the reason to, to care. care about it. The slow-mo shots, the slow-mo shots where all of them are together going to attack. I'm like, I'm like, you want me to care about that? Really? That's what you want me to care about? There are so many moments I can count in my head that are memorable, Brian. None of this was only for the fact that it was a I'm sorry, it was a terrible movie. We heard about the musical scene way back when. We knew true, that was coming, right? True. So he he would have known about that before we heard about it in the rumor mill, which but meant he was Why the cool. sudden switch with the, 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 the trailers? But that's, but that's the studio seeing the tracking, right? So when they see the tracking and the opening weekend is tracking is 75 to 80 and then that gets cut and now it looks like it'll struggle to get to 60. That's the studio seeing that and they're reacting to that and saying people aren't connecting with the character or what we're trying to pitch. The Beastie Boy pitch didn't work. Hence the cameo right. at the end. Right. But what I'm saying is, if you believe Nia DaCosta, Kevin's got to own the whole thing. So this is her quote from, okay. this is from a while ago, actually. This is from September. Okay. Quote, the Marvels is a Kevin Feige production. It's oh. his movie. I think you live in that reality but I tried to go in with the knowledge that some of you is going to take a back seat, end quote. That is the director of the movie two months before its release, basically saying, it ain't my movie, it's his movie. Well, he's the one who said that the Marvel's Assemble moment was gonna be the same as the Avengers Assemble moment in 2012. He's the one who said that, Nia DaCosta On didn't say that. Yes, 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 and it's like, dude, why are you saying stuff like this? trying to set that expectation you're setting yourself up to fail um i think the best explanation i can come up for this movie and i've been thinking about this with regard to phase four really and 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 such because all of these were delayed as we know right from their original timeline so i think when this movie was greenlit because you can sort of see it in quantum mania you can sort of see it in love and thunder for sure marvel had a marvel definitely had an arrogant mindset about the audience. We talked about it. We talked about the yeah. experimentation of phase four as a good thing, right? We talked yeah. about like they had to find some new tricks and all that sort of stuff. I think they took for granted the audience would just be there. Like see the Marvel logo, audience shows up. I think they thought they had earned that with Endgame. And I think they were surprised at how quickly that unraveled once they started to put out less than stellar product. But I still think what you're seeing is a lot of movies that were made from that mindset, if that makes sense, made from a period or thought of from a period where Marvel, Feige, Disney thought we already have the audience's money before we start. So we can go do stuff like this. And worst case, we're coming out of here with 700, 800 million. I still think like when this movie was made, that's what they were thinking. I do yeah. think that going forward when they're going to be making films, they will no longer be thinking that, which is why you start to see the reports of the Blade budget being cut to $100 million, because that already suggests the mindset of we can't count on an audience for that, for that movie being at a kind of level that justifies what the Marvels was made for, which is reportedly $250 million. <clears throat> do you think Blade deserves that sort of treatment? No. So I... And I don't think that has anything to do with Blade. Uh, I just think that you have to make movies based upon your estimate of the money you can make. So if you go back to Captain America 1, if you go back to those days, those budgets were between 100 and 150. So that when those movies made between 300 and $500 million global, they were profitable. So to me, Marvel is going to be cutting all of its budgets outside of maybe Avengers movies to 150 or less. That's my expectation because they can no longer count on, like Quantumania petered out so quickly, right? It didn't get out of the 400s. This movie is probably gonna struggle to get to 300. So now the budgeting will be set with the idea that, hey, we might be only able to count on 300 to 400 million out of the gate. So we have to set the budget at a level that we make money. 
yeah. if that's our budget. So, but you know, you go back and you look at like Captain America: The First Avenger. It doesn't look cheap. It looks fine. Mm-hmm. So, like, you clearly can make a quality film um, at that level. And it's funny, like, you know, we could talk about. We could talk about. I had these other ideas for like how you can make Blade on the cheap and actually have it work. And especially if you're going to be willing to be R-rated, which it sounds like they are. But yeah, no, I think. I just, again, you tell me this is $250 million. Like, I don't see the $250 million. Where is it? Like, on screen. Yeah. It doesn't look $250 million to me. Did any of the scenes that you clearly knew were supposed to be, like, memorable scenes or very entertaining or charming scenes, did those work for you? So, I would, I would kind of highlight the musical number. I would no. highlight the nod to Cats, which is the flirting no. scene. I would highlight the training montage between the three of them on the ship that was probably my favorite of the three i was at least sort of like modestly entertained for that um Mm -hmm. and then i guess you could say any of the set pieces you know leading to and then i guess i'll even throw in the the i don't know if you want to throw in kevin's kevin's dream the young avengers um echo of uh the cut of the cut scene from iron man i almost forgot about that Oh, we got to talk about that because that's what when I saw that scene, I was like, you know what? Nita Costa might not be exaggerating because that scene to me felt like pure Kevin, you know, selfishness. Listen, if you want to do Young Avengers, man, do this as a one off and you do the Young Avengers animation joint that you did. You want to bring Robert Downey Jr. back, you do that. Right? He's older. The Hulk is whatever. You do that and call it a day. This whole thing that you're going to do now, this Avengers thing, and base it on what specifically? I don't know. Maybe I, I don't know. But you're force feeding us something that we're telling you, perhaps you not you you may not be hearing it clearly. We don't really necessarily want this. But if you do do it, do that. Do the, the Avengers animation. Show. That joint was dope. I like that. Because it has some great surprises there. But don't force feed us that. That was the closest I thought to the three of them having chemistry is when they're on the ship figuring out how to make the power switches work. I was like, okay, if this was, and I kept thinking like, okay, if this was a real, if this was a peak Marvel movie, I think I probably view that scene. I'm probably smiling and enjoying that scene. But because I was already kind of annoyed, it was a little tougher for me. So that scene, I probably am okay with. The musical number to me just felt forced. It just felt like I knew it was coming and it just felt like um, like a bad Star Trek episode. It was like we showed up on this random planet and the gimmick is you have to sing. And I'm like, there's no other purpose to that other than we want to have some singing and we want to have some choreography. But then what really kind of threw me was when those people, like that planet became a battleground for this set piece. And I was like, holy crap, like I'm supposed to care about the citizens of this planet from the standpoint of helping equip and defend our heroes against Darben. That to me was like such a weird segue from like one minute we're on Broadway and the next minute we're like, you know, the apocalypse is coming. (laughs) And I'm like, there's no stakes. I I don't care about these people getting blown away and getting, you know, in in this fight. So that was that. The flirting scene is funny. Like I, my kid didn't go with me to see it. I told her about it. That's the scene that all the kids are gonna love. I'm just gonna tell you that right now because the second I said there's a scene with a ton of flirkins and baby flirkins, she's like, "Oh my, I, I want to see that. I want to see the kid. Kids will like that scene." And I said, "You know, I said you're not old enough to remember Cats the Musical, but I'll show you the song from Cats the Musical so you can actually appreciate the soundtrack of that scene and why that's the uh-huh. parallel they're trying to draw." So I actually think that scene is going to be better regarded than i think it should be but i think that one the kids will actually like what did you think brian of the set piece set pieces um unimaginative really i guess i like the scroll place the 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 the, their hideout wherever they were uh there were some things in outer space that i saw i thought they were visually done very well you know those things those things i like um I mean, the but, ref- oh, you mean the refugee planet? Is that what you're talking about? Or- the refugee planet. Because yeah. the, the ship was basically the same as Ronan's ship, right? I mean, that, that like her. Yeah, or, or- but how that visually all looked, I, I, I just, yeah. I okay. think they did, they did a good job visually with that. But other than I, that, I, it well, was I, the, really the no one that sort of intrigued me, but they didn't really explore it was New Hala after she had 
turned it into like, turned <clears> into, <throat> I actually kind of was like, if you wanted the dramatic movie, that was the only piece of it. Well, as usual with Marvel, I was like, that was the only piece of it. Where I was like, that, that might've been emotional. Yeah. Like, this idea that she had gone back on this quest of revenge and basically had annihilated these people, which is why she was given the name that she was given. And like that scene, it almost was like, can I see the full scene of that? Yeah. Like I might, like if you had led the movie with that, yeah, I might've actually been in a little more of this, like this yes. tragedy of she's, yes. here's our hero doing unheroic things and ruining these people's lives. You know uh, what that I thought about that, Brian? That modestly interested, but then we didn't really, we glossed over it, you know? Yeah, but you know what that 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 whole scenario reminds me of is Silver Surfer, really, you know? Fair. Okay, fair. That is that is so, stolen from another yeah, trope, yeah. Yeah, so I was like, mm, you're taking away that, what we're supposed to feel for in this situation, that is something for Silver Surfer to have to redeem himself because he was responsible for trillions of lives perhaps right yeah yeah fair but that but it's funny the 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 edit gloss over of that scene ultimately felt really fitting to me because they since they never really figured out how to use brie larson's carol danvers this movie really isn't about her that much in the end like mm -hmm. if you think about it like when you get to the final set piece like i said it's maria rambo who carries out the final act to save the day, Brie Larson is standing on the ship and then executes this desperation rescue attempt that fails. She doesn't really ever get this grand moment of triumph herself where she showcases her powers to save the day. That doesn't really happen in this movie. Like yeah. what you see is an echo to something she did wrong that she's trying to make amends for, but then she's almost more of like a supporting character in the actual fights. It's either the focus is on Kamala Khan's bangle or it's on ultimately Maria Rambo combining powers to fix the rift in space time. So I thought it was interesting, like of the three Marvels, it's actually Captain Marvel who kind of has the least to do in these big sort of moments as contrasted with speaking of characters who they definitely crack a character who definitely was cracked and maximized is how Loki was treated in uh -huh. his final. Like that's the opposite end of the spectrum where it's like he's been he's been making passes and facilitating and he's been doing these things all season. And he, in the finale, we'll do that in another show. He says, this is my show. Yeah. And I'm going to show you why. <laughs> <sighs> I don't need to see Loki ever again. Only like if he sees Thor, if he talks to Thor, that's what I, that would be interested in seeing something like that. Like if he wants to see his brother for, somehow. Uh, cause that would be, woo, that would be a dope moment, but how they ended that, you could put that on a mural. Anyway, the, the antagonist in this film, I, I, well, you know her name? Uh, Zoe <clears throat> Ashton, I think. If I was to do a Voltron movie, she'd be the witch that does the road beasts. Oh, all right. I like that. I would cast her. Cause I like she that. I wasn't familiar with her work, but I like that. No, no, I saw her. I was like, well, she looks frightening. Because <laughs> that Voltron was lady. Hagar? Was that, was that? Yes. Hagar? That was her name. <laughs> the cameo. Um, and, and it was like, damn, Brian, Brian heard that rumor and it was right. Yeah, so spoiler alert. It's, it's, it's the one stinger. Uh, Maria Rambo crosses over into what appears to maybe be the 20th century Fox X first or the version of earth where those characters exist. So she <sighs> sees what she thinks is her mom, but in this case, Lashana Lynch is actually playing binary. And then Kelsey Grammer as beast is sort of her doctor taking care of her. And he appears on screen and he makes a reference to Charles Xavier um, he looked to me a little different, like something about like he like it wasn't all prosthetics. Like the character looked more CGI. Like I went oh, back yeah, and looked at him in, a, in the last stand. He's CGI. full makeup. In this one, he looks like there's CGI and it looked a little weird. At least on my IMAX. Certainly, screen. certainly, it, it looked a little weird. That looked like this is how we wanted to look. Sort of. <laughs> this wasn't the first. This wasn't the final draft of Beast. You know yeah. what I'm saying? 
it, it looked, it, it kind of looked like someone had taken the face of Beast from the animated series and put it on Kelsey Grammer, and it kind of wasn't totally working. But anyway, so the scene basically, I think, like I said, I think it was supposed to suggest she crossed over into the Fox verse, which I'm assuming Deadpool we've heard is going to kind of resolve and reconnect. Did you care? I found it interesting. I found it, you know, I, again, I have a special place for the X Men. Uh, cartoons to bring me there was like okay so we're gonna see a live action version of all these guys hopefully they don't look like that but I see where they're going so maybe I'm interested in seeing how this all plays out I'm, I, I, I'd like the transition the excitement obviously wasn't there for me at least we didn't get a gigantic playing of the theme from the show this time was there an end credit scene like a, a no a just last... the one it's just the okay. one if you would have if you would have given me hey pablo what you think about an end credit scene for this movie oh i bet hmm at the end of this movie these people are celebrating they got their planet back galactus looms <laughs> over cut <laughs> that's how you do stuff baby <laughs> Instead we get instead we get Kamala Khan doing the Nick Fury from Iron Man One about putting a team together. And talk about something that was shoehorned in. I mean the Kate Bishop scene with her getting recruited, that that is like that that's like the worst segue of all time. But anyway, Kevin wants to do it, so it's gonna happen. Ladies and gentlemen, please let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the Marvels. Thank God. Blue Marvel didn't show up in this. That's probably one of the things I was excited about not seeing. Um, What's your rating? Zero. Oh, you went. See, I was gonna do a zero too. And I was like, I was like, is he gonna go to one or is he gonna go to zero? Okay, we're in agreement. It's zero. Zero. I feel so bad too because it's like you know you got a you got a female led project, you got a female director. It has nothing to do with them. It's not. It's not about them. That's the thing. Is like the, the talents of that, that they have or whatever they could bring. It's not about them. Like th this rug got pulled, you know, long before they could do anything about it. This is about the machine of Marvel breaking down. It, it really is not. I hope people don't look at the movie as like, oh, this is what happens when you have a movie set up like this where it's all female. I hope they don't look at that because then I'll point them to Ocean's 8 and say, you do know Ocean's 8 made more money than any of the Ocean's 11, 12, or 13, right? So it's not that. Yeah. And that wasn't even a great movie. That was a good movie, not a great movie. So I'm saying it's not about that. It's about how Marvel chose to make this movie from the get-go and then how they chose to edit it after. Yeah. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. And uh, stay tuned. Because there's a lot more coming. We'll see you next time. The show goes on! Yeah!